Hey YouTube, this next video we are going to be working on skis. I know that's not home improvement, but it is DIY. I will eventually build a ski rack to be mounted on in the wall in the garage. And these will be staying in the home. And I feel like having a good hobby that makes you happy is good for the home, good for that work-life balance, and mostly just because it's a big hobby of mine and, and we go skiing quite a bit. I've done all the work so far. We are going to cover P-TEX base repair, sharpening edges, hot waxing, and I, I was a very beginner with woodworking, but with skiing, I've done this multiple times and we're going skiing in a couple of days, so I thought I would document the process and hopefully it will be helpful for some people. Here's a quick look at some of the ski tuning gear that I have picked up over the years and we will go over them in more detail as we work through each step. I moved the skis to the ground and I know it's ridiculous having so many skis, but I'll go over them real quick. These are the Head Pure Joys. They're my wife's skis. We demoed a bunch last year and these were her favorite. They came with the bindings, so that's cool. They're light, responsive, good at carving. These are my carving skis. These are the Dynastar 4x4 Contacts. They were the first race ski that's also like all mountain, so you're not limited to only racing. And they are my shortest and heaviest skis. These are the K2 Extremes. Kind of treat these as like mogul skis, park skis. Also very good at carving, but a little more chattier compared to the contact 4x4s. These are my Black Crow Navis Freebirds. And these are actually backcountry skis because they have these fancy tech bindings for when you skin uphill. And that's an obscure hobby in itself in skiing, so I can talk more about that if anyone's interested. The gist of it is go with people that know what they're doing. Highly recommend taking an avalanche course. I took one two years ago and it was very educational. These are Lion Supernaturals. So they're not as fat as my powder skis, but for days where I want to do a little bit more carving. I will take these out. And these are the Atomic Automatics. They are the fattest skis I have. And they are for a day where it just dumps and there's a lot of snow. I first like to assess what we actually need to do. These Dynastars are the oldest skis, so they'll probably need the most work. We'll do a P-TEX repair here. You could clearly see the fiberglass. That's not good. I think I remember either reading or hearing about if it's too fiberglass, the P-TEX doesn't stick as well and it will probably fall out. And it has every year and I have to repair it every year. Here's a fun little gadget to have. It will pull the brakes down so we could get access to the base and the edge. Any rubber band will do. And I do the fingernail trick just to see if it pulls off material. And the edges are pretty sharp, but since we're doing the base repair, we're still going to sharpen the edges a little bit and compare that old ski to my wife's ski that's only 
one season old. You can see her base is pretty much intact. And I think for hers, we just really need a wax. And if you do the finger trick here, you can tell that's very sharp still, so. Let's get started. So we're gonna goo gone a few of the spots because you want to remove all the wax before sanding and adding PTEX. But the problem with the goo gone, it's going to remove all of the good wax you have, so you have to make sure when you're doing the waxing part to really get a good coat on there. And then I just follow everything up with regular dish soap, just to get it nice and clean before I start working. This next part, we're going to take our metal scraper. So if you had any sort of burrs up here, you could get it flat. The mine's already pretty flat. Might pick at it a little bit. And then I will take a 60 grit or, or 100, 100 should work and really try to make it so the PTEX will stick. Beautiful. Now we're gonna heat the PTEX. This part always takes a little bit of time, so a little boring part of the video. And the PTEX you want to drip the PTEX as close to the ski as possible because if it's dripping from too high, the PTEX will burn a little bit and I am sure there are better YouTube videos. It's a little windy right now so you can kind of see I'm really struggling with this lighter. Try to block it with my body. And you just lighted the PTEX. The entire thing is going to get covered in its own fire once it gets lit. We're almost there. Not quite yet. It's not drippy enough yet. And I'm also holding it close to the ski. So now the PTEX is on fire. Hold it close and slowly drag across the ski. Because the fire will actually heat up the PTEX in your ski. And the theory is that they will stick better when the ski itself is heated. I think I'm holding it too close, so it's like... Perfect. That looks good. And then, yeah, you want it to like barely touch the ski. I tend to be very generous because we're gonna scrape this in a little bit anyways. And I'm also going to do the other spots. Beautiful. And then one last spot here. So 
So now the PTEX has dried. I take my scraper. I like to start from the middle and and work my weight out to this left edge and this right edge because if you start from if you start from here and you go, you might tear up all of these new PTEX in there. And you want to try to get it at different angles. Now get this right portion. Sorry, that's probably shaking the table a lot. Let me check the video in a bit. But yeah, try to get it at different directions. And once it's pretty smooth with the metal blade, you can move on to your sandpaper and I will use a 150 grit. Followed by a 220. And then I will use my fiber text. They come in threes like this, a coarse one, and then you follow up with the medium one. And last but not least, the fine one. And that's a beauty. For this next part, we got everything nice and flat. After doing the base repair, everything is nice and clean. We are going to work on sharpening this base edge and this side edge. They require two different things. So this is the guide for the base. And these two are the same. They're the guide for the side. They're just different degrees. So this is a three degree and this is a two degree. Both of them will use some sort of diamond file. These happen to be from a company called Moonflex. They're called Diaface. I got a 200 and a 400. You could start with a 100 if you feel like you need something aggressive and work all the way up to a thousand. I'm just using these two. I dip them in some soapy water. I'm gonna show you the setup real quick for the base. The base will clip to this. And then this is the guide that will cut and this one is a one degree. It should say one. So that one stands for one degree. And then after I do all of the base, I'm going to stand this up to do the side. Same diamond file, clamp it, and this will guide the side of the ski. And I'm just going to do the base real quick with the 200, obviously diamond side down. I use these like Home Depot clamps, but anything works. Get some water. I'm using the soapy water from earlier and you always want to cut in one direction. So always cut in this direction. Don't go back and forth like that. And I'll just do three passes. Call it a day. Go all the way down.
we are just going to wax and scrape. So everything's clean, base repairs are all done, edges are sharp. I like to have the rope come over my arm instead of like this, because then it'll get like hot. I have this little piece of red wax. I I think it's for like warmer weather. I'm just gonna use it because it's far in the season, but I'm going to mix that one with my all purpose. I kind of do a generous pass along the whole ski. I'm sure there are very complicated, some people do circles. I just just get the wax in there. It's not rocket science. I have to wax so many skis that I don't really particularly care what is the best method. I melt it evenly and just do a really slow pass. I need a little bit more here, so just add a little bit more. And as it coats, I just go super slow pass and make sure to have it follow the entire ski and be as smooth as possible. And I'm sure there's very scientific and I sometimes I go back and forth just to get it a little bit more smoother. Beautiful. And then I just let it dry. I'm going to switch out for one I already waxed to show you guys how quickly I like to just scrape it. just to get different filming angles and trying to see how to do this YouTube better. Put that thing on there. It's not on correctly. And just go Do this three times. Two, three. So during the, the waxing part, that's not directional. The only things that are directional is when you are sharpening the edges when you're scraping and when you're smoothing things out. Same thing. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then do a long pass. Fourth video done.